Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to be going over how I used my Air Condren teacher planner this year for homeschool for my one child that I homeschool. My other son goes to public school. And we're going to go over how I've liked it. It's my first year ever to have used this for homeschool. I am a former public school teacher. I taught um, for three years before I stayed at home, but that was 14, 15 years ago. So I know school has changed a lot since then. We did not have Erin Condren back then when I was a teacher. We did not have fancy teacher planners. So I never got to use one of these in school. And I didn't use one homeschooling for my first two years until I started this channel because I could just make little charts on Google Docs and such for us to follow where we were because with just one child and being in the lower grades, first and second grade, I could completely keep up with that. But I wanted to show the homeschool chart that I have been using this year uh, just because I mentioned it as to why I don't really need a planner as much for just one child. And this is why. So I made up all our subjects and some days different subjects are rotating. So, and I assigned a color to each day of the week. Up here, I write what week number we're on for school because we do keep track of that since like I mentioned, we go on the public school dates for our school district since my older son attends public school. And so we like to know what week number we're on and I'm pretty sure I would do that even without public school. I think just so many years of me teaching public school and then having my older son in public school, those things are just ingrained in me. And I like to know, you know, what week number of 36 that we're on. I don't know that I could ever be a year-round homeschooler because we just love and treasure our summer breaks. And so we'll see what happens. But for now, that's how it works. And I write the date up here, you know, just like 3-31, something like that, to keep him on track. This is on a clipboard in like his homeschool bucket um, with all his work and homeschool bin that holds all his clipboards of work. And then there's another bin for all his books of work. And he knows to get this out and he knows what he can do on his own. And he knows which subjects we have to do together. And so that's how it goes. And each day of the week, I like that it's colored what he does because it's really easy to see you know, what subjects you do that day. And he checks them off. It gets really messy a lot of times because he's not always wanting to be neat on here. And then sometimes, you know, I scribble in if we did history or science that day because we rotate on that. Or we do several weeks for like history and then we go to several weeks for science. Sometimes we do two days a week for history, two days a week for science. It just depends on what units we're in and kind of what I feel like doing for that. So that's the gist of it, and this is the chart we both go on, so it helps to keep me on track, and then I can save them every week. I don't need to save them at the end of the year because in our state, we don't have to turn anything like this in, but it's nice just to have and see what we're doing every week, and once I tried this out for the first few weeks of the school year and made sure that this was kind of um, the days that we wanted each subject on, then I went ahead and had just, um, you know, 30 something of them copied and color so that I could just, now I just have a folder of them. And so I'm not worrying about even going to print one of these every Monday morning. I am just, I have my folder and I just pull this out every Monday morning out of my folder of copies. I write in the week number, I write in the dates and that's it. So then we know what we're doing from there. But since I started this channel, I decided to try the Erin Condren Teacher Planner. And I do have a complete walkthrough of this planner and in detail uh, when I first got it and first started using it. And I will link that below. I also have a teacher planner playlist if you wanted to check that out because I also review a couple other teacher planners, Plum Paper and Cariel. I think those are the only other two. And I do some comparisons. So I do have that teacher planner playlist if you want to check that out. It might be called lesson planner playlist. I'm not sure, but I will link the playlist below as well as my 
full detailed walkthrough of this planner. Because today we're not going to go through a full walkthrough showing you every page of this planner. I'm just going to talk about how I've used it, uh, why it was a bit overkill for me this year, and why I am probably not going to use it next year, and what I am planning to use next year. So let's get into it. This is a big 8.5 by 11 planner. And I'm going to go into what I used and loved about it and just how it was a bit excess for me and what, what I don't feel like I don't need this next year. So um, I love the dashboard because I wrote in terms of semesters on here and what days we had off school. So I like that. I broke it up into our two semesters. And then I broke up our six weeks periods because since my older son is in public school, we go on those six week periods and we go on our public school holidays. So we very much follow that schedule, even though we are homeschool. So we go on his public school schedule and six week periods. So I wrote that in here and I really just liked having that to reference during the year. There's a million places, you know, I can look it up, but just having it in the front of here was really nice. I wrote it in Sharpie. And I have not tried to take it off, but I've been told you can take the Sharpie off this dashboard with fingernail polish remover or alcohol. So I wasn't worried about that at all. I didn't want to use a wet erase pen because I just didn't want it rubbing off anywhere. It was something that I knew I was going to leave on there all year long. Okay, so I, I said I'm not going to go through every page in here. I'm just going to tell you how I used it. This page, I just put some curriculum that we used this year. Um, I think I just, yeah, I just listed all the curriculum we used this year and things I might be thinking about for next year. I didn't use these pages at all. And like I said, I go into detail through the whole planner in my full review down below. Um, the communication log I used for read alouds, but I didn't completely remember to write everyone down or keep perfect track of that. We are in March right now in homeschool. And we school until like um, the very first day of June this year, I think June 1st. So we're getting, we're getting near the end. We're on the home stretch. Um, I wrote down some of the history related books that we read for history this year too. The um, monthly reviews right here, I just kind of was writing an overview of what we did each month kind of in each subject, like touched on the big, like what math chapter were we in, what book were we reading for history, what read aloud were we reading, stuff like that. So just my overview was there. Um, I did write down days that we took off for sickness um, right here. And if my older son would have missed any school, I would have written those down too. But he kept going to school when he was sick because they give you too much work. And that was his choice. He wanted to keep going. Um, and yes, I realize that's not good for spreading germs, but we've actually never taken days off homeschool before. This is our third year to homeschool. This is the first year that he got something bad enough that we actually had to even take days off homeschool. So it looks like we took off about four days. Um, but usually he doesn't get anything that's bad enough to take days off. So that's really nice, but that's a nice place to keep track of it right there. Um, these are just some vocabulary words I was just writing in here, but I didn't keep up with writing them in here, things we were going over. Um, just some notes for me to remember, good writers, some acronyms. Um, then these were just notes thinking about next year. So already thinking about next year, what were we doing this year? So it's kind of pre-planning, thinking about next year. Okay, this was our first month. I didn't really know that this page was going to become really functional for me, but it turned out these monthly pages became really functional for me. They weren't yet in August. We had about two weeks of school in August. We started near the end there. Um, the monthly calendars, I, I wrote them all out, but I did not really use in here much at all. And I don't like her monthlies in here that we have to number them on our own or use her date dots. Because honestly, I don't like the way either one looks. I used her date dots on other months. Let's see if I can go to one. I used her date month dots on some months and I wrote in some months. And either way, I don't like it. Paying this much for my planner, I wanted the dates to be written in. I don't know why she won't write them in. I don't like the way the circles look. 
and I just, that's just my preference. I don't like it. I wish the dates were written in. Okay, so you have your month, and then you have some note pages, and then you have your next month, and I started really utilizing this page, I think, in October. Um, maybe not. Maybe November. Yeah. <laughs> So I started figuring out that this is kind of where I like to capture the big picture also, like I did in the boxes at the front, like what are we reading, what match chapter are we in, um, what uh, are we doing in history. So I started capturing the big picture right here every month. I didn't really use the monthly, like I said. I started out using the weekly, but I figured out pretty quickly I actually did not need to use the weekly pages with just one son in homeschool. This was big to leave laid out since it goes horizontal and I really didn't have room to leave it laid out every day. You know, Monday you have to leave it laid out to get the whole day. And also I use a Google Doc and I will stick that in here that I made this form on just the Google Drive. and. Um, so I use that and he checks that off every week and that's what we kind of follow by. So this was overkill. I didn't actually need something for myself. His form is enough for me to keep track of it. So after, I don't know how many weeks I kept up with it in here. Um, I love the look of the Erin Condren. Um, I don't love it being horizontal layout, but I understand you can switch your book you know, and you can mix things up and you could use it vertically, but you're not going to get as many subjects in. So I understand that for seven subjects, you need to have a horizontal layout. Um, I have a review of the Cariel, which is a vertical layout, and the Plum Paper, which is a vertical layout. But I do love the Erin Condren paper and the look of everything in Erin Condren. And I don't mind dating these, and I love that you have the week number, because I understand every district takes different holidays, so you need to be able to date your own weeks. So I stopped using this already about October. I just, I stopped using the weekly pages. I had dated all the way through the year because I'm a planner. I'm just like that. But I just decided, like I said, my form was enough. And this was overkill. It was something I didn't need to keep up with. And I am not someone to just fill something out for the sake of filling it out. It has to actually be functional in my life and helping me and doing something. And I just... I didn't need to fill this out. So as much as I love this, and I probably just would have absolutely loved this when I taught in public school. Like I said, Erin Condren wasn't even around then. But it's just, it was overkill for me in homeschool. So I ended up stopping using those weekly pages. Um, the student checklist, I thought I might use for something, but I didn't end up utilizing for anything in school. The stickers that came with it, I didn't use many. It's nice to have the pocket there. Okay, I really like this really thick plastic pocket that her teacher planner comes with, and you can add on more for a very small amount. And if I was using this again, if I actually needed to utilize this planner, I would add on as many of these as I could, especially if I was a public school teacher, because I can totally see me using them all up. It's a really thick page protector, and what I kept in here, I just didn't want to show. I kept our district calendar on this side, and I kept my son's middle school schedule on this side. That way, you know, when I'm pulling him out for an orthodontist appointment or whatever, I know what class he's in at that time. Or when he says, you know, he forgot something for science and he needs it by science class, I know what period and what time that is. So this pocket was great, was utilized. I love having that plastic pocket there. In fact, I wish she gave you a choice to hook your extra plastic pockets that you add on in the front or the back. Of your planner but nonetheless I love having that there I just stuck extra sticky notes on the back of the dashboard so the most utilized part of this planner are these monthly pages because it's where I would recap what we were doing that month and and uh, here's the most recent filled out month so you can kind of see I didn't need an eight by eight and a half by 11 page, but I loved having just a monthly recap page for myself to see what we did that month basically. And then I transferred that to my boxes at the front here that I showed earlier, right here. So 
that was my favorite part of this planner. And I was like, okay, I know I'm not going to use this for homeschool next year. Um, and I started, you know, realizing that this is the type of page that I need. And honestly, I could put this monthly recap in any little journal. I don't need a teacher planner. I don't need a planner, period, to recap this. This is all I needed with my printed out page from Google Drive. But um, I decided to try out the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly. And I'll show you why for this next year. So I didn't need this big of a page. The Deluxe Monthly comes in an eight and a half by 11, but like I said, I figured out I don't even need this big. And I don't need the four circles. I don't have to have that format. So let me show you what I started. We're in March, like I said. And since this planner does not come in academic, this planner only comes in calendar year, I decided to go ahead and start utilizing it right now in March. So we just started. And the Deluxe Monthly, I also have a full review video on and walkthrough on because I'm using one to keep track of expenses this year. And that's something I also have um, and give a lot of updates on in my Instagram. And I have some saved Instagram stories about that if you're interested too. So I'm using a Deluxe Monthly to keep track of my expenses so I was familiar with it. And I thought this might work perfectly. So I know I won't go right in everything on the weeks here, but I just thought I'd put what week of school we're on because I do keep track of that. So we're like in week 26, 27, 28. We have spring break that week. Um, and I thought these in-between pages were perfect for recapping my month. So I just put any days we have off school that month. And then I put our main subjects. We have a lot of other little subjects we do, you know, like typing, quick math, we do a scripture study. Um, so we have a lot of other little subjects, which I'll probably keep notes on over here. But these are our main subjects. And the month just started, so I kind of put what just what we're working on right now in each one of those. And then as the month goes on, I'll fill it in, kind of how I did on the other monthly charts, and add to it. And no, did I need this deluxe monthly to keep track of that? Like I said, no, but it's a nice way. Because I have a calendar here, and then all you have is these two pages in between months. And then you have a little note pages for your next month, and then you have your next month, and then you have that page for your next month. And this just kind of divides our core subjects out perfectly. So I'm gonna try this for March, April, May for the end of the school year, and then we'll be out of school. And then I'll restart in it. Yeah, it won't get used for the summer months. And then you have a lot of note pages just lined at the back, which is perfect for me just taking notes on things I'm thinking about for next year. Notes on curriculum, notes on days um, he's sick and misses school. So any notes I kept in other sections of that teacher planner will work perfectly in here. Also came with just some of the basic label stickers, two pages of that. I'm not sure if I'll use those in here. I might use them in my weekly Erin Condren if I need extras a little folder, and that's it. So this is, I'm gonna try out, you know, ending the year, and I think we will start next year in this, because this is kind of what I've morphed into thinking works the best. And like I said, I could write this in any notebook or journal, but you know, since I run this channel, of course I'm gonna use a planner if it works for me. And then I can still put my monthly recaps in these boxes if I want to, they're just smaller. I don't know if I will, but we'll see. Um, but I'm really excited about this. It's just smaller. It's way easier to grab out and handle. It's just tiny and lightweight compared to the huge eight and a half by 11 book that's so much heavier and so many extra pages with all those lesson plan pages. This was a cover I already had. I decided it's perfect for my school um, deluxe planner here. And because, you know, the world view, the world map, it's just really pretty colors. And it's one of my favorite covers, actually, of Erin Condren's that I've gotten. And um, I love the quote I put on it, mediocrity will never do, you are capable of something better. So this was on my budget deluxe planner notebook, but I switched out that cover because I thought this one went perfectly with school. So that's what we're doing. I didn't buy any tabs. Um, I hate that this doesn't come with monthly tabs, 
I hope she changes that because I know she's gotten a lot of complaints. I've seen it all over about that. For the price and for it being a planner, it should come with the monthly tabs like all her other planners. I don't love the way the tabs look that you stick on. I got them for my budget notebook and they're in that video if you want to see that. My review of the Deluxe Monthly, I will link it below. Um, and they work great for my budget notebook and I like having the tabs on there. Um, but I just think they're expensive. They're something like $8. And I guess I'm just stubborn and I didn't want to buy them for this. And I just wanted to try using it without the tabs first. I actually don't need the tabs in here as much as my budget notebook for the way that I use this compared to that. But if it bothers me to not have tabs, then I'll buy them and put them on. But I just, I wish it came with tabs for sure. Um, but that's a wrap up, you guys. That is how, you know, this was my first teacher planner to ever use. I told you for homeschooling. And that's how this big old planner um, worked for me this year. And I decided to, you know, phase out of it before even the end of the year. And this is, you know, size difference. It's huge besides just the size of the page, the heft of the book and of the rings. So I am really excited to use a smaller book next year and, you know, already be into it right now. I think it's going to work out perfect and I can see myself you know, starting next year in it. And I like the idea that I already have it set up for next year. I mean, it would be nice if this came in an academic year, but that it doesn't bother me that much that it comes in a calendar year and I'm using it for academic. It really doesn't bother me that much. I would love to have one full school year though and one notebook. Um, I can see how that would bother a lot of people, but right now I'm thinking I'm fine with it. So that is my teacher planner journey. And that's where I am. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'd love to hear if you use a teacher planner, whether you use it for public school and you're a teacher or you're a homeschool mom. I'd love to hear which one you use and how you like it. Thanks for watching and happy planning. Until next time. Bye-bye.